rear cargo carrier for your vehicle. Keep watching, see how I built it. For this project to cut all my steel, I'm not using my new favorite tool, which is the Evolution Rage 2 that I did in an awesome review on, and I still love this tool. Great tool. Evolution actually sent me this, the Evolution Rage 3 to demo, and I got asked quite a few questions on this when I did the review on that, because they're really close to the same price point. This one's a little bit more, but it has a lot more functionality. This one is a slider saw. This is a 10 inch. That's a 14 inch, so you're going to have a little bit um, taller capacity with this, but this one's going to be able to do longer pieces, you know, flat chunks of steel, stuff like that, um, where that one can't. So they each have their benefits. This one um, is compound miter, so it's it's a miter saw. You can adjust the angles. I mean, the versatility with it is pretty amazing. You can't go wrong. It does have a laser as well to help you guide you through. The laser does not work good for the metal because the metal shavings are too hot and they'll ruin the laser. But you'll, you can use them for the wood and everything else. I would say this saw is great for a woodworker. This is a woodworker saw that would loves to cut metal once in a while. Um, where this is a dedicated metal cutter saw who would once in a while want to cut a piece of wood, a 2x4 with nails or something else to affect. This would work good for that. This is more for heavier on the, the woodworker side. And it, it does a great job at what it is and the price point is amazing. So I'll put a link to this uh, where you can go. Just look at that if you want to see some specs on that. But I'm using this saw uh, solely for this project. This is all just scrap steel, and one of them actually had the pieces. I cut it out to leave a piece attached how I wanted it. But essentially, I'm just going to have a bunch of these standoffs to give myself spacing all the way around and then just a mimic of the exact same thing below, just on top, give me a little tray. So the receiver hitch part, this is a receiver hitch that actually goes, would mount to a vehicle. And so we got the hole, what I did is I just drilled a uh, roughly a 5 8 hole and enlarged it just a little bit. So this is the shank that actually attaches to this and this is what would be attached to the vehicle, uh, just like a trailer hitch. But that will slide in and then you'll just use your standard pin to hold it. And so this just has to get welded to this piece. And so we'll just line that up. And ideally you would use a piece long enough to stretch the whole thing. I don't have one long enough, not a big, not a big deal. Um, then we want to use stabilizers that go off of the center hitch and the more of an angle they come down at, the uh, the more stable your outside edges are, the less twisting you get. So they'll, those will rest on the top of there, um, down at a corner. And then I actually have a piece of um, bar that'll go into there. It's just long. So I'll slide this uh, two inch piece. I'll slide this, I'll trim it down just a little bit and I'll slide it up inside of there. So these are now one solid piece with this piece going all the way up into here and I lose new, no strength because the weight is in this direction versus side to side. I lose strength side to side because I don't have as much material that way but I keep the same amount of strength up and down where I need it. And then I, to keep the, because the, uh, this is upside down the floor is going to sit on this ledge right in here and to keep the uh, the middle so that there's a, uh, a ledge in the middle as well for the floor to sit, I've notched this, I've notched this there, but I've notched it around this tube and that also gives me a better weld surface all the way around here and just makes this um, more rigid instead of just having it on top. So finished up all the welds all the way around and then I took some expanded metal and cut it to fit and tack welded it in every single spot so that it's secure and you can actually hook bungee cords and tie downs to this as well as the sidebars and everything. So let's go throw it on the vehicle and see how it looks. It actually doesn't weigh very much at all. I'll put it in and we'll stand on a corner. 
That might flex a little bit. Yeah, a little teeny bit of flex, but that's good enough. There you go. That'll haul anything you want to put on it. it it'll easy hold the 500 pounds or so in here. So, time for paint. You can see it painted up nice. You can see the relative size of it. it easily holds this huge cooler. It'll probably actually hold two of them. But now we got to make it reflective so you can see it from behind so you don't accidentally rear end it. Just to keep stuff safe. And I love using this, uh, this uh, reflective tape. It's very sticky. And what I'll do is I'll just cut out pieces to fit on these crossbars where they won't get rubbed off very easily. And just put them across the back. And you'll be able to see um, from a good distance away. I mean, this stuff's very reflective. This looks actually like a tail light um, in the dark. Figured I'd show you the one I made years ago. And it's almost twice as big. It's three foot by five foot. And it actually can mount in the upright position or typical. And the pin just goes in it the same way. There's a little screw that ratchets it down so there's no vibration when it's sitting here. But then we can actually just lift it up. I've got to handle it so long. I'll pull it off for a second. And when you do one that you can mount up and down, all you do is you pretty much mount a receiver on here, the same that's right here, and then you just have a tube that goes between them. And it can just be straight. I had to do this one angled because it's so long, I don't want to drag it through stuff. So if it was straight, it would stick so far out behind the vehicle, you'd end up dragging it in different spots. But that goes in the same way it normally would. Pin goes through it. And then there's a pinhole here and a pinhole on there. So it uses two pins. And then this comes up. And I've cut it at an angle so it's easier to get on and off. But then that mounts like that. Pin goes through as well. And all I've done on this one, a little bit different, is I've just used angle iron and just pie cut it and bent it, bent it, bent it. Cut a bunch of holes all the way around. Put experimental over the top. And I was done. So when I did this, I didn't want a full square tube on the for the vertical mounting because I didn't want to have to slide it on. I wanted to be able to just lean it up and then be able to screw in a screw and take out the slack. But I also had to do some bracing and stuff like that because it's just channel. So now you just take the pin out of there and you use the same pin for here, but I just can take it out. I can slide this off and just flip this up position just right, line up the hole, put the pin through, and then just screw this down to take out any any slop or wobble. All the ref I put a couple pieces of the red and white reflective tape on. They illuminate amazing when a headlight's even remotely on them. Um, so those will really keep the back end of this just safe and secure, but nobody should be following this close anyway, and the taillights of the vehicle aren't blocked. But these are invaluable if you don't have a truck, and they are invaluable even if you do have a truck. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these build projects, don't forget to click one of the links after here for another build project that I did in the past. Leave me a comment below and thumbs up. See you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.